Life Audio. Teach Us to Pray is brought to you by Life Audio and is a part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. I always think that it is so unfortunate when people believe that God does not speak to us today. Now, we may not hear him in a loud, thunderous voice, but God still speaks to his people if we will listen. In fact, there are many ways that God speaks to us. And today I'm going to share with you how God speaks to us through our circumstances. Stay tuned. Welcome back, friend. You are listening to the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we teach believers practical and real life tips on how to grow your faith and relationship with God through the power of prayer. I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast and founder of Beloved Women, where I encourage, equip and empower women in the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of God's word. In episode 41, we learned how to hear God when we pray. In episode 37, we learned how to hear God through his word. As I shared in each of those episodes, there are many ways for us to hear from God. And today I want to share with you how God speaks to us through our circumstances and how we can hear from him in this way. Your circumstances are the events that occur in your life right now. Since we know that God is in control of everything, including our day-to-day circumstances, we can also understand that he will use our circumstances to speak to us. Again, this doesn't mean that God is roaring down from heaven in this loud, thunderous voice. However, he is delivering messages to us to share with us which way we should go, which decisions we should make, and which things we should do. He will use our circumstances to order our steps. And then those circumstances become the messages that God will use to create the path he purposed for our lives. It's important for believers then to be able to clearly look at our circumstances with a lens of faith to see how God is not only moving in our lives, but speaking to us through our lives. Let me share a quick story with you. When my husband and I had only one child at the time, we thought about getting a home because at the time we lived in an apartment and we wanted more space. So we decided to look around, evaluate our finances and see if purchasing a home would be something that we would be able to do. Now, what you have to realize is at this time, my husband is working night shifts and I'm a stay at home mom with our first child. So when we ran the numbers and looked at the prices of homes, we concluded that we would not be able to afford a home at that time. However, the Lord just really kept placing it on my heart to get a home. So I just prayed to God about it. I said, God, you keep pressing this on my heart for us to move into a house to actually get a home. However, you know what our bank account looks like. We can't afford it. But I prayed. I said, God, I trust you, though. If you're placing this on my heart, Lord, then work it out for me, because right now I can't see it. I can't see it possibly happening. And so I just essentially just released the matter to God and surrendered it to God because he was going to have to do it. Nothing in our finances was about to change. The housing prices were not in any way about to go down. The circumstances were what they were. So after I prayed that prayer, I went to bed and I woke up the next morning to this heavy rain, the sound of just heavy rain just pouring down. And I heard my husband come in through the front door. And I remember thinking, I'm so glad he made it home safe from his third shift job because it's raining so hard. Right after I thought that, I heard my husband say, Christina. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? I jump out the bed. I open my bedroom door and there is water in our home, in our apartment, just 
flooding from the ceiling all the way down. There's we're literally walking in water. Everything is wet, except <laughs> for some reason, the master bedroom where I was asleep and where my daughter just happened to come in the room with me that night. So long story short, our apartment floods completely. That was the circumstance. And that was the event that really had my husband and I looking at each other like, maybe we need to reevaluate this getting a home situation. So we expand our search and we actually find an amazing home, the home I actually live in now currently, at a price that we could afford. We originally didn't think that that was possible. We didn't think it was going to happen. And the truth of the matter is, if God had not sent that flood, what happened was a pipe burst in the apartment above ours and no one was there. So it, that apartment was flooding until eventually it just reached capacity and just fell down into our apartment that was below it. But had God not allowed that to happen, we wouldn't have been moved to find a home. We wouldn't have been pushed out of our comfort zone, out of what we thought was possible to then expand our search, to then really take God seriously at, at what he had placed on our heart. And that's just one example of many where God has used a circumstance to speak to us and to move us in the direction that he wanted my husband and I to go. And I believe that God is doing the same thing in your life as well. So I want to share with you two major ways that God speaks to us through our circumstances so that you can have ears to hear him when he speaks to you in this way. Those two ways are one with open doors or opportunities. God will give you an open door or an opportunity in your circumstances in your life to tell you, hey, this is where I want you to go. This is the direction I want you to take. The second major way that God speaks to us through our circumstances is through closed doors or redirection. This is when he says, wait a minute, I don't want you to go in this direction. And so he will either close an opportunity, he won't give us an opportunity, or he will kind of switch up our path and lead us into a new direction. And so I just want to share with you a little bit about what those two major ways that God speaks to us through our circumstance looks like today. So God will speak to us through open doors and opportunity. And I was reading First Corinthians the other day where I came across First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. And this scripture in context is the Apostle Paul ending his letter to the church in Corinth. And he's explaining to them that he's about to go on some more missionary travel and things of the such. But he explains to them that he's actually going to stay in Ephesus for a little while because God has opened a door of opportunity for him there. And so the verse reads, but I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost because a wide door for effective ministry has opened for me, yet many oppose me. And this scripture really stood out to me because the Apostle Paul was aware enough spiritually to understand that the current circumstance he was in provided an opportunity for effective ministry for what God was calling him to do. So he knew then that he needed to stay where he was. That that opportunity was the sign, the signal, the message from God directing him on what he needed to do. Stay in Ephesus because the opportunity was there. Now, this is what really sparked my interest because after he explains there's this wide door for effective ministry, there's this opportunity, right? He says, yet many oppose me. So he has opportunity here but there's still opposition. And so this is where I believe many Christians get stuck when it comes to really hearing God speak to them through their circumstances. Because just because God gives you an opportunity, a door of opportunity to walk through, doesn't mean that there won't be opposition. And so we have to have the discernment to know that God is leading me in this opportunity. That doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. That doesn't mean that there won't be opposition, such as in the case of Paul. Yet we see Paul understood that 
His purpose was to minister to the Gentiles. That was his purpose. And when a circumstance presented itself for him to do that, he knew that he needed to stay. He knew what decision he needed to make, even in the face of opposition. And so when God opens a door for you to walk in the calling and the purpose that he's placed on your life, then you walk through that door, but don't be intimidated by any opposition. Because if God opened the door for you, you can believe that he is walking through it with you. I think of the Israelites and their departure from Egypt and their freedom from Egyptian slavery and Moses leading them out of Egypt. Yet they found themselves at the Red Sea. And then there's the Egyptian army running behind them, wanting to not not take them back to Egypt to be slaves again. No, wanting to kill them, wanting to annihilate the Egyptians. So here they are where it looks like there's no opportunity, but God makes an opportunity for them by parting the Red Sea and confirming his promise that he would deliver them and free them from Egyptian slavery. God had already made that promise to them, but he confirmed it through this miraculous act of parting the Red Sea and opening up this opportunity for them to be free. So pay attention to your life. What doors is God opening for you? What opportunities is he giving you? This is God speaking to you, telling you to go forth. Take hold of that for which he has promised you, that which he has given you in spite of the opposition that may come because an open door from God cannot be closed by any man. Now, when it comes to Hearing from God through our circumstances, yes, he will open doors and give us opportunities often. But at the same time, he also closes doors and offers redirections in times where he wants us to take another path. In these situations, we have to realize God's not trying to punish us. He is doing so because he loves us. And this takes faith to be able to see that because oftentimes we want what we want, but we don't know always what's on the other side of a door, but God does. And so if he closes that door, then we can trust that he has a good reason for it because he is a good father. I think about Jonah and God telling him to share his grace with the Ninevites and Jonah just having a hard heart and not wanting to do that. And in the entire story of Jonah, you just really see God using circumstances to redirect Jonah in the way that God originally called him to go. First, he tries to get on a boat in the opposite direction of Nineveh, to which God sends a storm. God sends a storm. He then jumps off the boat and God sends a big fish to swallow him up. So here we see so many examples of God using physical circumstances to redirect someone who was actually really rebellious (laughs) against God. And sometimes that's us. Sometimes God redirects us because we're being rebellious. We're going against his will. But sometimes even when we're doing his will, he'll redirect us because he has a better way. I shared with you that when my husband and I had our first child, we lived in an apartment for a short amount of time. And at the time, I was a stay-at-home mom. I was not working a traditional nine-to-five job. However, I was searching for a job. I knew that we wanted to move and get a new home and that a second income would most definitely be helpful in that endeavor. However, for every job I applied to, I wasn't even getting interviews. I applied to so many jobs that I knew I was qualified for, some I was overqualified for, and I only got one interview, which still ended up with me not getting the job. 
And so God just kept closing door after door after door. And I actually remember doing a Bible study on Jonah, who we just talked about, and how sometimes we can just be going against the current. We're going against God's will. And that's why there are so many doors closing in our face. And it was during that study that God revealed to me that he wanted me to stay right where I was. He wanted me to be a stay-at-home mom. That is not what I wanted at the time. But I looked at the story of Jonah and I realized I do not want to go on this roller coaster ride with God. Let me just go ahead and get in step with him. And I've been a stay-at-home mom ever since then. God has truly transformed my heart. I absolutely love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. He knew what was on the other side of the door of those job applications that I was applying for. He knew that's not what he had for me. Now, you might be the opposite. Maybe God's opening a door of an amazing career that he's called you to, or maybe He's closing the door on a career that you've had for many years because he wants to take you in another direction. How God speaks to us in our circumstances is going to be unique to our lives and relationship with God and the purpose that he has on our lives. God purposed me to be a stay-at-home mom because not only am I able to be home with my children, but also I was able to start a global women's ministry that would serve women in ways I never could have imagined. And that is my work with beloved women. I wouldn't have been able to really walk through that door of effective ministry, as the Apostle Paul calls it, had I been working a traditional nine to five job in the way that I'm doing it now, which I believe is the way that God is calling me to do it. Now, these are just my stories, but I want you to really look at your life. Look at your circumstances, what doors are opening, what doors are closing, and how can you see God's grace even in those situations? I want to leave you with Proverbs 16, 9 that says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. God has a purpose for all of our lives, and that purpose is determined by each step that we take. We are blessed because God has already ordained those steps for us. So whether a door opens or a door closes, we can trust God in the way that he is leading us to know that our plans, they're good, but his purpose is better. We can hear God through our circumstances, when we are aware that he is with us, whether a door is opened or closed. So pay attention this week and see how God wants to speak to you through your circumstances. Did you know that God made us all beautifully different, even in the way that we pray? That's right. Your prayer personality is the unique way you are most likely to communicate with God. And knowing which of the three personality types you have can equip you to hear from God more clearly and overcome any obstacle to your communication with Him. I invite you to take my prayer personality quiz to learn how you best hear from God, how you most likely connect with Him in prayer, and just to have a little fun. Take the quiz now at prayquiz.com or find the link in the description of today's show notes. It is my hope that today's episode has provided you with insightful and helpful tips on how you can pray. We have so much more to talk about when it comes to prayer. So I hope that if you are encouraged by today's episode, you will share it with a friend and subscribe so that you don't miss any future episodes of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we will continue to learn how just like breathing, prayer can become a natural, consistent, and life-giving part of our everyday lives. Until then, be sure to connect with me at belovedwomen.org and join me on the Beloved Women app for unlimited videos to grow your faith and learn God's word. Available now in the Apple and Google Play stores or at belovedwomen.tv. Thank you so much for taking time to listen today. God bless you and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Teach Us to Pray is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com.